Okay, here we are with part three of vertical kinematics, lesson 2.08. And uh, instead of doing an additional problem, I think we'll just finish up the problem that we have and I'll add a part D. So I've summarized what we had in parts A and B. We had uh, a volleyball was being hit starting at the 0.8 meter mark because we don't serve the volleyball off the ground with a velocity of positive 0.75 meters per second. Our direction of positive is up. That means that our acceleration has to have a negative value the entire time. We found in the last part that uh, the time to go up, so for this portion, this was 0.76 seconds. <clears throat> and we found that the volleyball rose to a height of 3.7 meters. Well, what part C is asking us is for the time of flight. And this is when things start to get a little bit challenging because when you did horizontal kinematics, what you found was that you had a start point and a stop point. And that start point and stop, stop point were almost always the same. But what we have now is we can analyze different sections of the motion and it can mean different things depending on how we of what we decide to analyze. So to start off with, I'm going to go, uh, there's also another uh, uh, factor to consider, and that is that there's more than one way to solve these problems. The more we add to our physics repertoire, the more possible solutions we have. That's why um, it can be difficult to demo problems, because the way that you solve it may not be the way your neighbor solves it. So what I want to do is I want to start off with the first option. Uh, the best way to go is always the stop, start point and the stop point. So let's see what happens if we try that. So let's go with option one. Start to stop. And you'll notice that um, I'm picking two points. So let's go here in pink and going here to here. And I could pick any two points. So what we did in the last one was we were analyzing uh, motion from the start point to the top of the flight path. What I wanna do now is I wanna have the total time from here to here. And uh, so let's see what we can do with the variables that we have. So I'm gonna do my kinematic variables. Got V sub O, V sub F. Y sub O, Y sub F. And remember, these only count as one kinematic variable, A and T. So um, I actually start at the point. Um, yeah, I'll be okay if I stick with. My start point is 0.8 meters above the floor, and my end point is zero. My acceleration for the entire time is going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. I want to solve for time and I have an initial velocity of positive 0.75 meters per second. <clears throat> so the equation that I would want to use here is y sub f equals y sub o plus v sub o t plus one half a t squared. So when I plug in my variables, I get zero equals 0 0.8 plus 7.5t plus one half negative 9.81t squared. And ooh, here's what we see. I have a quadratic solution. If you have a quadratic function button on your calculator or you have it programmed in, you might want to just go ahead and solve it here. Personally, I hate working with a quadratic equation, and so I'll usually go with an alternative solution path. Another way that I could solve this problem is that I have my time of uh, flight from start to middle. I could solve for time here and then add it together. And that's, I think, what I'm going to do, just because I hate working with the quadratic equation that much. So let's start in option two. 
Now I need a new set of kinematic variables because I'm analyzing two different points. So I'm going to go V sub O, V sub F, Y, A, and T. A is not going to change. That's still going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. I'm solving for time. So, whoops, I forgot my Y sub O, Y sub F. My bad. Let me fix that quickly. So I'm starting, I'm considering this my start point, and this is my end point. So remember, at the top of the flight path, I'm going to have a zero meter per second. Top of my flight path is 3.7 meters, and the end is going to be zero. Here's a point I want to bring up. You might say, well, isn't my velocity at the end zero? No, it is not. There is a final velocity here. You could say, well, the ball comes to a stop. When we say final velocity for impact, we're talking about the velocity just before an object um, begins its impact with a surface. Once that object hits an impact, uh, impacts a surface, we have a whole new set of physics going on. So you're talking about, when you're talking about final velocity, the velocity of the ball just before it hits the ground, and it's going to be greater than 7.5 meters per second. My guess is it's going to be around the ballpark of maybe, I don't know, uh, a 0.8 or 0.9. And it's going to be negative because that ball is speeding up. So you should get a final velocity here of like negative uh, 8 or 9 point something meters per second. So for this, though, I can solve this without uh, finding that final velocity. Can I? Crap. Okay, I had to pause the video. Uh, I had a second there where I thought I had screwed up the video and I was going to have to re-record. I had to do that an awful lot this afternoon, so let's keep rolling. All right, so I have uh, the y's always count as one. Here's my acceleration. Here's my initial velocity, and I'm solving for time. So if I have three kinematic variables, I can solve for a fourth. The equation I would want to use here is y sub f equals y sub o plus v sub o t plus one half a t squared. y sub f is zero, y sub o is 3.7 meters. I have an initial velocity of zero, which is gonna make this factor go away. I have one half, negative 9.81, and I have t squared. And when I do my algebra, I end up with t equals 0.866 seconds. So if it took me 0.76, this is for the second half. So to solve this, I have to take my 0.866 seconds and I have to add to that 0.76 seconds. And that's going to give me 1.63 seconds for my time of flight. If we were interested, we could also punch in and calculate what the velocity is going to be here. And I did that while I had the video paused. And it turns out that when I calculate that with kinematics, I get negative 8.5 meters per second. So the final velocity is not zero. And that's gonna come, um, that's gonna come up again and again, that you know, your final velocity is gonna have a magnitude and it needs to be pretty big. All right, the last thing I want to do, I'm going to add a part D instead of doing another problem. So let's do a part D. Uh, what is the displacement when the velocity is negative 1.1 meters per second? And I'm going to switch to blue for this. Well, if um, one of the things, this brings up the last point that I want to talk about, and that is that motion, kinematic motion, is symmetric. 
I'm going to redraw my diagram so I can point some things out. Let's do the volleyball up and down again. I'm going to have it on the floor over here. So we're going to go up and we're going to come back down. All right. And my velocity here is 7.5 meters per second. If I look at the values, uh, and especially velocity, the velocity values uh, at this point and at this point, at the 0.8 meter mark, if my velocity here is positive 0.75 meters per second here, my velocity here is negative 7.5 meters per second. If I'm looking for my displacement when the velocity is negative 1.1 meters per second, that's going to be, remember the top of my path here is um, 3.7 meters and this is zero meters. So if I'm looking at negative 1.1 meters per second squared, that's going to be somewhere up in here. Here I'm going to have a negative 1.1 meters per second and here I would have, if you look at that same point, positive 1.1 meters per second. But um, time and velocity are symmetrical. So we'll have the same values at the same points. That doesn't necessarily apply to this problem. I just wanted to point that out. So I need a new set of kinematic variables. So B sub O, B sub F, Y sub O, Y sub F, A and T. And the problem says, I want to know what my uh, displacement point is here when I have a negative 1.1 meter per second velocity. So I think the best way to solve this problem is going to be to start from this point and analyze it for this point. That means that my initial velocity is going to be positive 7.5 meters per second. My final is going to be negative 1.1 meters per second. My initial is 0.8, so at this point, this was the 0.8 meter mark. My acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. The formula I'm going to want to use is B sub F squared equals B sub O squared plus 2A Y sub F minus Y sub O, or delta Y. I'm going to have negative 1.1 squared is equals 7.5 squared plus 2 times negative 9.81. Y sub F is what I'm solving for. Y sub O is 0.8. When I do my algebra, I'm going to end up with negative 19.62. Y sub F equals negative 39.39. And when I solve, I get that my final position is 2 meters. Take the time, work out the algebra, and make sure that uh, comes out. But the point, so what, what are our takeaways here? Uh, takeaway number one, sometimes when you uh, problem solve with kinematics, you can end up with a quadratic function. You're welcome to use that if you want to. You certainly don't have to. Takeaway number two, you have to decide what two points you're going to pick. And then you have to make your kinematics fit. So pick your points. And the variables follow. Point number three, we have symmetry. So if I look at the two meter mark, so this is the two meter mark. At the two meter mark going up, I'd have a positive 1.1 meters per second. At the two meter mark coming down, I would have a negative 1.1 meter per second. If I'd asked you, uh, what is the velocity on the, uh, as the ball falls at the 0.8 mark, it would have been negative 7.5. And point number four, I guess the last takeaway is you have to analyze the problem. We're now getting into the realm of, uh, you have to look at what you've got uh, and, and decide what's happening at any two given points and find a solution path uh, analyze and know there's more than one
one possible solution. All right, that was the very long solution to uh, the second problem. Uh, so you are now ready for 2.08 homework, and I believe you're going to need to do 2.15. I think the 2.08 is pretty short. So also make sure you do 2.15. I'm doing that from memory. I think that's the other vertical kinematic practice. Thanks for watching and have a good day.